morning YouTube well uh, I'm in Casper Wyoming and I thought I'd check out Fort Casper let's go uh, let's go in and learn a little bit about uh, central Wyoming so sort of a display of some of the weapons these are unknown dates on these two bows that same with the, the club these two points were uh, made or English stabbers or dags first appeared trade goods provided northern tribes fur traders in the early 1800s um, they could be used as a knife sometimes they were put on the end of a, a lance to be used as a spear uh, and the arrows these two are originals and that's a reproduction but I'm just looking at how not really quite straight those are but relatively straight but they did the job and most of the time smoking was as a in some sort of ceremony uh, so here's some examples of some of the different uh, pipes I sort of like the the decorations on this one and of course you would have kept your pipe in a bag for storage highly decorated by beads and such and this headdress has 64 golden eagle feathers and it was made using wool trade cloth and uh, beads and what's interesting is these gloves were manufactured and then then decorated but people see the swat sticker and they immediately think Nazi Germany but it was used throughout the world still is in India it means good luck the Nazis just appropriated it Native Americans used it too so that would have been the batter one of the batteries used for operating the uh, transcontinental telegraph some of the original insulators as well as the telegraph keys so in the 20s and 30s Casper Wyoming uh, oil companies came here Texaco is a big one has a refinery outside of town I, I wonder if uh, Frank from uh, So, 1923, Texaco opened up a refinery here in Casper. Oil was big, and I wonder if Frank has those cans. So this would be the drill bit used drilling the oil. I mean, what's interesting? I always thought of oil as always black. That's what you always see, but it can come out in a variety of colors and. Uh, compositions. Well, let's take a walk out to the fort. This is a reproduction, obviously. It was done by, uh, laid out according to drawings made by Casper Collins, and uh, of which the fort and the city is named after. Now it's spelled. C A S P E R for the fort. That was because, and his, well, his name was actually C A S P A R, and it was a misspelling on the orders, is why it ends up being spelled the way it is today. And this was, I said, all reconstructed, but it was done uh, by the WPA back in 1936. So. Pretty nice little blacksmith shop. I'd be comfortable working in here. and got the hand cut nails over here. And a variety of tools from what I, I hear is blacksmith would uh, travel someplace with one set of tongs, an anvil and a hammer and a couple other things and some raw iron and make all the specialty tools he needed for whatever jobs. 
That was to be this sutler store, place to come out and play some checkers, cards, have a little something to drink, buy a variety of canned goods or hard goods, clothing um, that the settlers around would need or the, the troopers would want uh, when they're off duty. Pretty sweet room for uh, officers' quarters. Nice stables for uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven horses. So this would be the barracks, and beds may look a little large. That's because they slept two. So two men per bed, mess hall, you know, mess hall right there. And the cooking right there, so, you know, you yell at the cook, get him out of bed, get him over here, get the fire going, get some food. And then down at the other end of the building has been the supply room for the telegraph. You got your, uh, your batteries there, probably the acid that would have gone into those batteries up in the jars up above. The equipment you use to cutting poles and insulators, getting ready to set them in, and then all that connects up here to the telegraph office, which is why this place existed. Now behind me, this is the Platte River. Uh, you can see it's got a pretty good current going right through. This is the end of June, almost July, and uh, it doesn't look that wide here, but over the years, man has engineered it. The bank here is a little higher, built up on that side to try to contain the river. Uh, but this was the site of two things. Uh, first, the Mormon Ferry which when Brigham Young was leading the Mormons uh, down, this is the Oregon Trail, came along on that side, and they, uh, this is where they branched off to go down to Salt Lake City. Well, what eventually became Salt Lake City. Uh, so he built a ferry, and he, uh, to get all of his people across, then he left, I think, seven men behind to ferry other believers across and also charge non-believers to cross um, sounds like you know if you belong to the church you got a free ride across um, but not then you know it was a money-making proposition can't blame them uh, some people didn't want to pay that they would go other places up and down the river make crude ferries for themselves and uh, get across so saving a little bit of money but uh, then there a uh, gentleman built a bridge across and it was 810 feet long and I'll I'll show you in a second I'll show you what the reproduction of that part of that looked like um, he charged between a dollar uh, to six dollars a wagon to go across uh, depending on the height of the river higher the river, the more he charged because he knew it was lower. Uh, he didn't want them to not cross on his bridge and pay him and go find a, another spot. But when the water was high, it was too dangerous and they had to pay. Um, he also charged $4 per hundred head of cattle. So um, again, money-making deal. He's, they figured the bridge cost about $40,000 to build. 810 feet long is a big bridge. And back in the, that day, that was a lot of money. So uh, this is a site of both of those things and also why uh, Fort Casper is here because this was a major crossing. Uh, the Overland Telegraph came through here and Fort Casper kept going until uh, they actually, until they moved the main uh, telegraph and transportation lines south of here where the Transcontinental Railroad was. So let me show you what uh, one of those bridges, what the a section of that bridge would have looked like. So this is an idea what the, the ferry would have looked like. They used cottonwood logs, which are 
what those trees are. Uh, 23 feet long and hollowed out like a dugout canoe to, to lighten them a little bit. And then uh, one wagon at a time put on, dragged across, and they charged non-Mormon immigrants a dollar and a half per wagon to haul their wagon across. So, and the uh, and then that was replaced by the the bridge, which this is what it looks like, or a section of it looks like. Um, this would have probably been rather swampy here. Like I said, the river would have been varied in width and height. And so this was put logs put down, filled with gravel and earth up to the point where it was going across. So if you can imagine riding up on this and going across 100 or 810 feet. So it would have started here and about where that American flag is over there is where the other end of it would have been on the other side of the river. You got a nice little display of wagons, beer wagon in the middle, and coaches, and one giant fire extinguisher. I would love to have had any of these. But I sort of like that one. So why do I like that one? Well, the glass sides. Oh, wait, it's a hearse. Always wanted a hearse and a horse-drawn hearse. It'd be really cool. And this would have been as a reproduction of a typical handcart. Uh, they call it the handcart migration, which um, a lot of the Mormons, all their personal belongings on that, and they were either pushing or pulling this handcart from uh, all the way from the east all the way out here. So can you imagine walking along, pushing that for day after day after day for a couple thousand miles? Me either. As I mentioned earlier, uh, oil uh, was big around Casper. So this would have been is an example of a drilling rig from around 1910. It would have been steam powered big belt on that running the arm drill bit in the back uh had this caterpillar winch which would have been used to uh raise and lower the bits and uh tools and then there's another example of a of a n another uh kind of drill drilling rig similar still run off steam this, I believe that big steel band there, that would have been the break. Well, that ends my visit to uh, Fort Casper here in uh, Casper, Wyoming. It's only $3 to get in. Uh, a lot of things we've seen before, but there's little things along the way. The actual, the local history is, is really interesting. So, oh well, I'm gonna get on the road, see what else I can find. See you later, YouTube.